Hello and welcome everybody to One Player. Today on the table we have Age of Civilization, this micro Euro worker placement game. Plays in 30 minutes, got a dedicated solo mode. 10 plus, let's let's get into it, shall we? So with this tiny little box comes not only the rule book, of course, but a book of scenarios. And these are for the solo game mode, the path to glory. Um, I'm just going to play a regular solo skirmish because I don't want to get too tied up in all of the other rules that, that come along with, this, uh, with the scenarios. Um, but this is like a standard game, um, a standard, standard solo game where you're trying to beat your own score. This, this version of it, at least. So... I'll kind of explain what we've got laid out on the table. There's a lot of cards to to, to take note of, <laughs> and then um, and we'll just get right into it. So up here we've got the wonder uh, row. We've chosen four out of a possible fifteen wonders to go at the top here, and these are the available wonders that I am able to build should my civilization rise to uh, to glory. So obviously we've got my Iron Stonehenge, and we can build Angkor Wat, Chichen Itza, and the Great Library. I'm not sure if that's a great library, just like a nice one, or if that's uh, the Great Library, but probably the latter. Um, we have uh, this civilization row in which we get to choose which civilization we are indeed shepherding into the future. Um, so we can choose at the moment from Francia, Greece, Egypt, Britain, and there is a large deck of um, varying you know, Korea, Maya, Nubia, Congo, the Slavs, Arabia, Huns, you know, so the whole the whole kit and caboodle. So we can uh, periodically, or after every turn, I should say, we will draw a new one of these to add to this row, add it to the potential marketplace for us to uh, control. Now here we have essentially like the, the timeline which controls the actions. It's kind of an interesting mechanic here. So this is a static, um, these are static, three static actions on this um, jumbo card here. And this slides down the timeline and anything that's under these three actions are the three other actions that we can do. So on each of our six turns, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six, we have a total of six actions to choose from. But once the, uh, once the static actions, I guess, move past or move away from um, the lower row, uh, say you're over here, you can no longer hunt or fish or farm as it, they're no longer um, attached. Yeah, that was, a, that was an explanation. Here, we have our technology grid, where we can uh, pay to research um, various technologies, so writing, education, mathematics, mining, ironworking, etc. And those will make our lives hopefully a little bit easier as we go through the game. I have three coins to start, I have a scoring track, and we're playing against, uh, really, there's not much of an AI per se. Um, all we're doing is, I need to remember to add uh, one... These are technology cubes, but we use them to count also um, the AI's military strength, um, denoted by these little shields on the cards here. All right, enough blabbering. Let's get on with it. So in our first, uh, in the first turn, we're going to choose our first civilization with which to rise. Um, and, well... There's a, there's a big part of me that wants to go for Britain, but it's going to be quite a long time until I'm able to reap any rewards from this. So every turn end, we get an extra point per seven points that we have. Well, that's that's not going to add up very quickly. I do like the Egypt card. It makes wonders a little cheaper, which is nice. Um, although the wonders that we've got in the, uh, the, the options for wonders that I have aren't exactly dazzling to me necessarily i suppose this wouldn't be bad if we can get um if we can get this and we get an extra point every time we farm so we'll have the next three rounds to to rack up extra points there which would be pretty nice but then uh, again i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to get i have to pay seven um, i have to pay seven to get a wonder and i start with three so yeah 
that maybe it's possible. Let's go with Egypt. And the reason is that when on the, this marking on the side here are the amount of workers that you are able to place. So I have four, which is the maximum. And that way I can do the most actions in my first turn. Later on, we can choose new te uh, we can choose new civilizations with which to replace Egypt with, or um, add on to. We have a maximum of three, but we can add on to their various abilities. I've chosen Egypt. Let's place down our first um, our first couple of workers. I think if I hunt. I will gain one coin, and I will also, because I've got no technology, gain a point. So that will get me right off the board, so that's one point, and that feels, you know, double, double yes. Then I am going to farm with two workers on this one, on two workers, and I will gain three coins. So that's this rather fetching gold coin here. And now I do have enough um, to buy a wonder. So what I do there is place my, my meeple on this one. Unfortunately, he is going to get sacrificed in order to build this wonder. But I'm going to build a wonder straight off, pay seven for it. I don't know if this is the best. Oh, pay six because Egypt gives, gives me a discount. So that's nice. Um, so pay six. I don't know if this is the best strategy going straight for it, but let's just go with it. So we're paying six to get a wonder, which isn't bad. And I'm going to choose this Chichen Itza as we've... Uh, as we previously mentioned, I'm just to place that there. So when I gain this, I gain a point, excellent. And then every time I farm from next on, um, I will gain an extra point as well. Um, I get three points for purchasing the wonder itself, so that leads me up to five, and we are well on our way to a high score. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's, that's the end of our turn. We've placed all our workers. So what we're gonna do is resolve them. So this worker, unfortunately, um, he is no longer with us. He, you know, died falling down the steps of Chichen Itza. Uh, three workers that did not, uh, that, you know, got to farm and hunt, um, very pleasant activities in comparison, um, will come back to us. And then we will move the timeline down one, so we can no longer hunt. We will give our opponent one uh, cube to essentially uh, remind us that they have a, a military strength of one. Currently, we also have a military strength of one as well. Um, and the reason we do that is because any time we move onto a, a card with one of these symbols in, this war symbol, or a conquest, um, we have to compare our military strength. And if the opponent has more than us, then we have to lose a worker. We will lose the war. Um, luckily, as we said, we are both on one, so we get the benefit of the doubt. None of us have to sacrifice anything. And so what we're going to do now is place a coin on top of each of the remaining civilization cards, draw a new one to add to the pool. Japan is minus one per two shields. Interesting. So the more might you have, the more culture you get, which is interesting. And they also get an extra coin for fishing, but that will only be good for one more turn, uh, well, this turn. Let's see, with Greece, you get an extra point when you culture, which is okay. Again, that's only going to be in the very last turn, so I don't know if it's necessarily the, my best option. I would like to farm um, to take advantage of this. I would also like to build because it costs me only one. Um, but I cannot do both because both require two. Um, both require two workers. And it's going to be a while until it's going to be a while until I have to fight anybody. But I think I might up my military might. So friends here, they love a they love a good fight. So that you get extra points for conquesting, and you're able to conquest any time. Um, regardless of whether you're on the actual conquest slide or not. I think, you know what, France taking over Egypt, that, that seems possible. I will gain the, the bonus coin that was on there. But what I do is I, I, I leave the bottom uh, ability of the previous civilization visible. So I still get the benefit of this. I just also get the benefit um, of, the, or I now get the benefit of the Francia card so it does still only have it has a population of three so i don't get to add any more meeples to this unfortunately and if i conquest i will have to sacrifice somebody but 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 
I think I might do it. I'm gonna farm, definitely. So that's two, two workers on there. It'll get me three coins, so I'll take this gold one back, plus a point for Chichen Itza. So I will get a point there. I can't build anymore. Um, I could research. I could do a research um, and gain some military strength, potentially. Um, yeah, you know what? I think that's actually not a bad idea. If I do research here, I'll do four. So I'll pay four for it. Um, I'm going to gain a point and I'm going to gain a technology cube and I will research mining. This gives me the ability, uh, well, it gives me t extra two military strength. So that's my total of three. And it allows me to build for a dollar cheaper. So both of these combined actually mean I can build for free. I still have to place my workers on there to activate it, but I can build without paying the cost. And I think that is a pretty sweet deal. That is turn two. You see how quickly this moves on. We've only got six rounds. So here we go. We're going to resolve our workers. Nobody died this time. France much more peaceful in terms of its wonder building and, um, you know, uh, citizen death. One. Um, we're, we're going to add a technology here. We're going to slide this down this way. We are going to add coins to these. Every turn end, gain a research for free. That's not bad, is it? It's not bad at all. Although we'd have to drop down to only two workers, which is... A, I'm not that keen on doing. I mean, probably we'll farm again. <laughs> Right? I mean, why not? If I do pick this up, but annex it and place it under here. Yeah, so, okay, so if I take the third, if I if I do take, so I can either, you know, decide not to, right? Or I can take one of these civilizations. I can wait to see if anything better comes up, or I can take one. If I do take one and annex it, stick with Francia, um, when I annex it, I do get to collect an extra worker. So that is quite tempting. I don't think I want to go for this main ability here because I'm, I'm kind of liking the ability to conquest at any time that I want to and gain a star for it, or an extra star, I should say. But if I take Babylon, I annex it underneath. I gain the legacy ability on the bottom here, so that's research uh, costs one less. So both building and research costs us one less. Remember, building actually now costs us zero. And I get to take my last worker, my, my fourth worker back, and we get to strategize from here. So I think if we farm, we should definitely farm. Any, any chance we get, we should farm. So we've got three coins um, and, a, oops, and a point up to eight. Now I've got two workers left, and I have four... I have four monies, so I think if I build up, my, if I research ironworking, that's going to give me a mad amount of military strength. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or uh, sorry, five, six. So it'll give me six military strength, so that will be enough to conquest probably, probably as much as I want. I will have to sacrifice my meeples to do that, but... If I just keep conquesting, I'll be gaining three, I'll be gaining three um, points per turn, and I think that's a decent, think that's a decent return on our investment. I am going to do it. I'm going to pay three. So I'm going to pay three here. Oh, that's four. I'm going to pay three. I give that right back. Gain a point up to nine. Gain a technology and place that on iron working. So France is getting real, real weaponized real quick. Um, we've got five, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I still need two to build for free, which is, mm. and the only thing left for this guy to do is either buy a wonder, which we don't have enough money for, we've only got one coin, or be exploited and get two monies. Um, but to be honest, I don't think that's a great idea. Um, oh, I suppose I could conquest with him right now, couldn't I? Yeah, I can conquest with him, that's easy. So I've got I've got a strength of six, that's one, two, three, four, five, six um, um, from my research. I can conquest with him, six versus two, we win. So we actually gain three points. Yeah, I, I think I just talked myself through that and then, and then forgot to do it. Unfortunately, this fellow does get sacrificed, so... That's a shame, but I think we'll be okay. 
we've resolved our meeples. We will slide this along. We are now in round, what is that? One, two, three, we're in round four. Give that another cube. I don't think we have to do this anymore because I can no longer take any civilization cards. So there's kind of no point in drawing anymore, but let's just, you, know, you can get an idea for them anyway. Oh, well, that's not a great card anyway, because we can't hunt anymore. So we have to skip our civilization phase. We, we can't do that. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to farm anymore. So that's out the window as well. We do have, we do have the ability to conquest again. Fortunately, I think I'm only gonna be able to do that once, I think once, because we're coming up to the plague. The plague will kill one of my workers, and then the conquest again. I'll have. To, I'll. I think we'll win the wars, but if we run into, we'll, if we do the conquest again, so we can do it twice. Okay, we can do it twice. Yeah, I mean, why not? Now we're on the conquest, so we can actually do this. So we'll conquest and gain three, because two from this card one from this card so th i'm reaching over there but it's over here three points so we're up to 15 and now i've got two workers with which to do something i suppose i could build with them couldn't i um i can build with them for free so if both of these go and build um build minus one build minus one so zero dollars to build that gets me two points and I'm up to 17. So that's that wasn't a bad haul, I think, right? So that's three, four, f yeah, five points in a turn. I think that's all right. Who knows? I mean, who really knows? I suppose I probably should. Um, anyway, so on with the game. Um, that was a quick turn because that's all we needed to do. We're going to shift this. We're on the penultimate turn of the game. We are going to grab our meeples. Unfortunately, this fellow died in glorious battle. And again, we can do all this, but we don't really need to because I cannot add any more civilizations anyway. And we could have had Arabia. This is like, look at what you could have won. Arabia. Every turn end, we get a coin per two technologies. So we'd be getting an extra coin. Yeah, it's not that good. I mean, whatever, it's fine. Okay, now we are on the plague. Unfortunately, we're lining up with the plague round and thus, yeah, we're dead. So we can no longer conquest. Yeah, I was right. Only one more conquest and that was it. So now, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Oh, did I give three? Yeah, I think I need to give him another cube. Okay, so we've, we're, our population is dwindling. Um, which is unfortunate. I think our only option is to trade, and that will get us two coins, which will allow us to research. There's no way for me to, to get my workers back, I don't think. I really, I've really kind of shot myself in the foot for the end game here. So I think my only option is to trade. I will get two coins for doing so. The other players get one, but there is no other players, so that's fine. And that way, next turn on my last turn, yeah, I think research is my only option. I don't think I, I won't be able to afford culture. It's way expensive, but I can research and get a point that way. So I guess we'll do that. I don't. It doesn't say in the rule book that you can have or that you can't have no population at the end of the game, but I would kind of say that's probably against the spirit of the uh, of the the immersion here you know if you're building up a civilization but yet your population are all dead after conquesting uh, one too many times i think that would be a kind of a a wish a wash a wish wash a wish wash yeah a wishy wash i don't think i'm gonna do that it would be a great way for me to gain an extra three points but yeah Oh, that was that turn. Yeah, we traded, we got money for it. Cool. So now we're going this way. We're giving that this, one, two, three, four, five. That we still haven't, we've still got more strength, a military strength in them. So now that we move on to conquest and this war symbol, um, we do the military strength check. We still are okay. That's fine. And so, yeah, I'm mean, going to think we're going to have to, I think we're going to have to research. It's a bit of a shame because I don't have any end game point bringers so like uh, on some of these cards you know it's like at the end of the game you mm, no, it's not any of these like at the end of the game you would gain you know uh, one point per technology you have or one point for every two technologies you have or whatever i don't have any of those cards so unfortunately i'm kind of stuck just getting what i can um 
you know, this would give me one engineering if I got up all the way up here from sailing to mathematics to engineering, or if I researched engineering here, um, oh, which actually would, would work. I can go from across from en ironworking to engineering and it would get me an extra two points or an extra one point. So yes, all right, that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna pay three to research, normally four, but um, we got that, that legacy uh, ability. I'm gonna place my worker on research. I'm gonna gain a point, gain a technology, place it here on engineering. So I've got mining, ironwork, engineering, and then at game end, I get one point per wonder. That's now. Um, that's it. That's the game. Super simple. Four workers isn't a lot to place, and six rounds isn't a lot to play. Um, but we've 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 got there. So I'm going to move up one into onto 19 points. Not a great score, I don't think, but not terrible. I could have done. Well, I may, maybe I chose wrong. I think I mentioned right at the start the wonders were somewhat underwhelming. I think that is probably the, you know I think that's that's partially the case. Um, let's see what else we could have had. Um, Yes, yeah, so like if you've got four uh, meeples, you gain two. Fishing gets you an extra, uh, yeah. At the end of every turn, if you've got five or more coins, yeah. Game end engineering gets you two, so this would have been a nice one to have. That gets you an extra two as well. When war occurs, if you have the most, oh, well, that, yeah, that would have been nice because that's like, that's at least an extra two. Great wall, you get, oh, this is a bit kind of a cheat, isn't it? Game end, you get one one point per oh per three i should say so per three military might so that's only that's only one point okay game end uh point per pyramid game end point per three so that would have got us two points yeah so actually maybe not build gets you an extra point yeah so maybe not maybe maybe i uh, maybe i just did the best that i could with what i got so we stuck with france and and went all the way through we could have um replaced we could have replaced them oh no we we, we played egypt for a while um so we, we could have replaced them um but chose not to reach the three limit cards um which is a bit of a I don't know, it is a bit limiting, you know, I would like to, um, you know, in that, uh, in, it makes me think of uh, gen Gentus, right? Um, when you, when you lay down your cards, you can keep adding to them. So you, everything you build, builds your civilization um, and, and makes it better. You're gaining points from cards that you picked up in the first round all the way to the end. And the cards you picked up in the first round, usually not that good, but they're still doing something here we're kind of locked and loaded. So once we've made our three choices, we can't pick from these anymore. And that becomes kind of like mm, a bit of a, a bit of a, a frustrating restriction. Um, I, I like the compactness of this and the quick, the, you know, the speed you can run through it. There's some interesting decisions to make. And I do feel like I've got a decent amount of control over the outcome of the game, as you should with most worker placements. One item of housekeeping, I, I think this, I think the color scheme is great. Like I, I really, I like the art. I mean, there's a lot of symbology and there's a lot of stuff to read on the cards. So there's not a lot of like lavish artwork, but I think it's presented really well. Um, you know, I like the, um, you know, the different logos or the different sigils, I suppose you could say for the different civilizations. These little like uh, marble inlays are really cool on the different, um, on the different act actions. And obviously the little drawings of the wonders are really neat too. Um, we've got meeples, uh, black, brown, yellow, and white. And, you know, that's all well and good. I think it's they're kind of unusual, you know, an unusual color. When you include a white guy, an Asian guy, a brown guy, and a black guy um, on your stickers um, to be placed on said meeples, I don't know, man. There's just something I something something off about that. I I don't know. I don't I don't know. I haven't attacked. I obviously I have not stuck them yet. <laughs> it makes me feel uncomfortable because I don't I don't want to. Nah, 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 nah. You know, there's there's more colors in the rainbow than 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 just four. <laughs> that is gonna be it for me. Um, like I said, minor housekeeping. That is going to be it for me. I hope you've enjoyed the playthrough. Um, I'd like to get better at this game, quite frankly. I don't think I'm quite there where I'm really hitting all the combos that I should be. Um, but I've given a good few playthroughs and, and I've, I've tried to play through some of the solo scenarios. They're, they're hard and the extra rules make it a little bit more complicated, which is fun. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of good stuff in there. 
Um, I'd like to get better at this game, um, and I will keep playing it, and maybe that means there'll be a, 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 another play coming up on the channel um, in the you know mid to distant future. But uh, until then, um, there should be another video appearing on the screen where if you want to take a look, you know, to, uh, another one of my uh, playthroughs or reviews or whatever you want to call them, you know, check it out. I hope you'll stick around. Do um, do consider subscribing. I would love it if you uh, if you did. Drop a like. Leave me a comment. What do you think? Did I mess us up? Did you see where I could have done a little better? 19 points. Again, not the best. Not the best. So, you know, what, what should I have been what should I have been looking out for? I don't know. Yes, that will be it from me. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, until next time, I will see you later.